Guys, I'm not really proud of this, but the Ashes of Creation development live stream for July just went by and we got shown some badass particle effects on the mage spells. We also got insight into some of the spells that a mage will have, including things like blink, an ability to transfer mana to allies, and the highlight, a freaking laser beam that goes pew pew pew. Now this almost, almost made me want to start playing a caster, but you guys know that I love playing tanks like Lancers and Terra. Since Steve typically plays a mage in the other gameplay videos we've been shown so far, this live stream, he was put on a tank and wasn't very familiar with his skills, so, you know, he kinda moused over all of the ones on his hockey bar. It happened really fast, but, you know, I might have gone back frame by frame and screenshotted all of the skills, and I might have gone over all of them in detail and thought way too much about their application and I might be a little bit too excited for Ashes of Creation. I might need help. But let's talk about the tank skill kit. Now keep in mind this is pre-alpha. It's obvious just by comparing these skills to each other and seeing how detailed some are and some aren't that these are not done. But it's a nice peek into the updated kit a tank has when we compare it to the skills they had available to them at the PAX East a while back, as there are already some significant changes. So first on Steve's bar was a skill called Onslaught. Right away, you'll notice each of the skills has three ranks. As has been described in the streams, leveling up and putting skill points into each ability will unlock the higher ranks, and in most cases add some crazy new additional features to that skill. Onslaught looks like a standard warrior charge, a gap closer, something any melee bruiser needs to have to stand a chance against a kiting class. So it's good to see it here. The small shield is ideal for a frontliner. I think that just the shield addition to typical charge skills in other games makes it a lot less scary to dive into the enemy frontlines in PvP or into raid bosses. Raising it up a rank makes it a knockdown which is going to help further with high mobile targets that have ways to immediately gap open after you charge, giving you a chance to apply different abilities before they run away. But the last rank, knocking up all targets in the charge path, makes this skill super exciting. Because now as a tank, you're not just thinking about where your target is, you are trying to position and angle yourself to hit more targets in between. Now this simple thing makes this skill sound so much more exciting to use. I can already imagine the fun it's going to be to try to tactfully position yourself for maximum effectiveness on this charge, and how the other players you're fighting against will try to stay away and spread out and anticipate you trying to use this knockup ability. This skill alone gets me super super excited just for that line knockup effect at rank 3, and this is only the first skill we've gone over, so let's go into the second tank skill on Steven's bar, which was Lacerate. This spell seems to be a bleed and a threat builder, nothing amazing here, we've seen bleeds like this in almost every MMORPG, but still not bad to have that mechanical DOT to apply for a tank. DOTs have tons of benefits such as keeping targets out of stealth and in combat, etc. Something a tank definitely needs to be able to do. The coolest part of the skill is the rank 2. Now instead of having to worry about overriding your bleed and wasting mana or energy, it encourages you to use this ability as much as possible to explode your debuff repeatedly. So I can see this skill as becoming the main sort of threat damage ability for tanks. You spread out a bunch of lacerates on all your targets and if you're losing threat on one of them, you just hit them with another lacerate to reset the debuff and do some burst damage. Nothing special from this at rank 3, but obviously they're still working on this stuff. The fact that I'm reviewing this in this state is just me kind of being like a desperate clingy nerd girlfriend to ashes right now. So let's, let's go on to the third skill. Resounding Smash, not a lot complete on this skill at rank 2 or 3 either, but it looks to be an AoE skill for the tank. The skill seems to have a target based component to it as well as an action based component, so you would aim it on the ground or aim it at a target and it hits everything in that area, but whatever you have targeted echoes out a second wave of damage as well. It's another skill with key positioning to get the most out of the ability from the looks of things. This is something you'd want to use probably once you're able to group the mobs up tightly together so they get hit by both of the smash effects. In this one, nothing done yet for rank 2 and 3 for us to talk about though, so let's move on to the fourth skill, Shockwave. This reminds me a lot of Shockwave from World of Warcraft, sending out an area of effect that knocks down enemies, so it seems already this early on that tanks have a lot of threat focused and CC focused abilities which is exactly what I want to see as a tank player. I'm okay with not dealing a whole lot of damage, tanks generally focus on locking down targets and controlling the battlefield through their beefy form, and already 4 skills in, they're pretty much satisfying that fantasy. 
The second effect causes a leftover area of effect to deal damage over time to anybody still standing on it, encouraging the tank to basically keep the targets in place, and I think it's safe to assume a skill like this would have a long cooldown. The fifth skill here is just Bulwark. It's not that exciting, but also a typical staple for tank types. It's a damage mitigation and threat generating skill, clearly used for frontlining and taking hits. And it doesn't do anything impressive, but it's obviously something you want to have in your kit when you are playing a tank class and dealing with high damage dealing targets like a raid boss or trying to breach through a group's frontline in PvP. In a similar vein, the next skill, Mirrodon's Fury, does basically the same thing, focusing on threat generation and damage mitigation. However, instead of using a block this time, it uses the mitigation effect, so we're not quite sure the differences between mitigation and shield block when it comes to incoming damage. Perhaps one focuses on blocking physical damage and the other one focuses on blocking magic damage and maybe you need to choose between which one you have active based on what you're fighting. So we start to see the arsenal for tanking enemies in PvE begin to form, but the next few skills are the really fun ones. So next, let's look at Javelin. Phew wee I love me a leash skill. Just like in Terra, just like Death Grip in World of Warcraft, it looks like this is target based, not aimed, so you throw out a javelin and pull the target towards you. I love stuff like this on the melee bruisers, as I absolutely hate being kited in games. It's one of those things that pisses me off, because I like to run in and smacky smack, and when you are hopping and running away and slowing me down, getting out of my melee range and I can't smacky smack you, I get mad. So skills like this, when I see you hopping away, I'm just like, get the f back here, man. It just feels so good to leash somebody back who's trying to get away. If we look at the rank 2 and rank 3 skill to pull up to 5 targets and then stun them, we really start to get an idea of how all of these skills could fit together in a PvP and PvE encounter. It's perfect for grouping up enemies into a nice spot so you can then smack them all with a nice shockwave and knock them down again, and then line them up and do a beautiful rank 3 target onslaught and knock them down even again! And suddenly you're able to fully CC a group of 5 people for like 6 seconds depending on the length of your CC knockdowns and oh man how good that's gonna be when you pull off a combo like that and you've got your damage dealer sitting behind you firing laser beams and shit. Man, I'm excited. I love this sort of kit for tanks and MMORPGs, but let's keep going as there are two more skills to look at here. Next is Lob Weapon. Now, if Javelin isn't enough and Onslaught isn't enough to deal with those pesky kiters that keep running away, you just freaking chuck your sword at them. Hell yes. Thinking about being kited just fills up my nerd rage, but reading these skills, just imagining the whipping sound of my sword as it hits that annoying ass mage who won't let you catch up to him and the sword just goes tink in the back of his head. Ah, oh, it feels so good. Obviously, this would be a way for tanks to pull mobs in PvE in tandem with the leash skill, generating threat at a distance before you charge in or use leash. Ranking this up to make it bounce makes it interesting, but I'm not sure how easy it will be to rank up all of your skills, and if I had to choose between this and Javelin or Onslaught being rank 3, I would definitely rank up the other ones over this. Even if this does a lot of damage, as most of the time as a tank, you're not trying to do damage. But the rank 3 effect of it exploding could be cool, so we'll have to just see what sort of cooldown and what sort of damage this skill has. But I can just see having this on my bar is going to be a big stress reliever. Having no way to do range damage generally feels really really bad in MMORPGs. So even if it's limited, it'd be better than having nothing as a tank. Now the last one we have here is Ultimate Defense. This one is really interesting because of the second line here. It reduces your damage taken based on the health missing. So it's an oh shit button, but it seems like if you use this skill when you are at very very low health, you just straight up become immune to damage for a short period of time. I love the idea of being this unstoppable bloodied up tank who just won't go down. It opens up a whole dynamic of what raid bosses can get away with in terms of tank damage and how tanks have to use this skill to survive certain bosses and abilities. Also great for last minute objective completions in sieges like taking down a gate and gives your healers time to react. The rank 3 part of the skill also looks like a must have. A nearby group wide damage mitigation buff based on your low HP sounds like it'll be an insanely powerful cooldown that every tank is going to want to have in their kit. And again, it opens up my mind to all manners of potential PvE encounters just from looking at these skills from a single class. So those are all of these skills that Steve had on his bar. There was another one there, but it didn't have a tooltip. Obviously, this is pre-alpha, and this isn't the tank's full kit. It was just what was on his bar during the recent test, and not only that, none of this stuff looks like it was augmented with a secondary class yet. Just imagine you take the secondary class of a mage and you augment the onslaught skill to leave a trail of fire on the ground whenever you charge. 
Or you take the Cleric and augment your ultimate defense so that it heals everybody nearby instead of just reducing the damage they take. Or you can augment the weapon lob skill so that instead of just throwing your weapon, you summon a spectral copy of your weapon that attacks with you. There's so much potential and cool ideas they could come up with with this augment system. I am really excited to pick up the mantle of being a tank again in Ashes of Creation. But I'd like to hear from you guys though. What sort of class archetype are you most excited to see in Ashes of Creation? What sort of skill and ability kits are your favorites from MMORPGs in general? Leave a comment below. Thank you guys for tuning in and until next time, I am booping out.